Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and in this video we'll see an example of Spring AOP. So before going for AOP, you have to make sure that you know Spring Framework, at least the basics of it. In, in the last video which I have uploaded, there is a video of Spring Framework. Uh, so you will find the video in the description area if you have not seen that, uh, do watch it. But if you already know Spring Framework, that's fine. I will explain the code to you and you're good, you're good to go. So what I'm doing here is, I'm trying to use, I, I have an alien class here, a very simple class in which I have, I have a method called show. And I made this class as a component because I want to make this as spring bean. And that's how we do it, right? We simply write add component, which will make this class as a spring bean class. And so what I wanted is I wanted the object of alien here. So we got the object here, but instead of doing alien a1 equal to new, new alien, not normally what that, that's, that's how we do it in Java, right? But then since spring framework says we will provide you the, provide you with the objects, you don't have to make an object by yourself. We are doing this extra thing. This is the object of application context, which will help you to give the, which will, uh, which will help you with the object. Uh, you simply have to saw, uh, we have, you, you simply have to call this method, which is get bean by passing the type of a class which of which you want an object so we wanted object of alien so we will get we will get the object now where i have done the configuration for this so there are multiple ways you can configure your spring framework there are xml based configuration uh, we can use annotations or we can totally go for java based configuration so i am using java based configuration here so as you can see i have a class called app config uh, in which i am not doing any configuration i'm i'm asking spring framework to do everything for me so just write add configuration and add component scan and by mentioning the package in which package you have all the components, it will do it for you. So as you can see, I have a, I have a main method here in which I'm creating object of alien and then I'm calling show. This is what is normal spring code example. So before going for AOP again, let me just run this code just to show you what we are expecting. So if I run this file, uh, you can see we got the output and output is hello world. It's that simple. But then why do we need AOP? So let's go to this alien here and uh, think about this. If you talk about a method and this will be your business method, right? Normally we don't write a method which prints hello world, right? In real life scenario, we write lots of codes. Uh, example, let's say if you want to buy something online, if, uh, maybe if you want to create a method for that, maybe you want to transfer money to someone, uh, maybe you want to check the all the details about a customer, you want to check, you want to transfer all the assets from one department to other department. So normally you do all those things in a method, right? Now this method will have multiple statements, not like one statement here, it will have multiple statements. Let's say it has uh, 15 statements. Now 15 statements is something with, using which you can do all the ta tasks. Let's say you are transferring money. So all this thing will be mentioned here. Now this 15 statements is actually your business logic because as a developer, our job is to, con is, is to solve a business problems, right? So this is my business logic. So this is where I will write my business logic so this 15 lines is business business logic but what happens you know with this logic we don't only write the logic we also write some extra things example whenever you call a method we we also maintain a log file right log file will normally take two lines of code maybe one lines of one line of code or two lines of code so we we maintain a log when you call a method and we also maintain a log when you are done with the execution so here also you will write two lines of uh, two lines of code for log right again if you know about different logging concept we we can use log4j or whatever logging concept you use or maybe tracing so you normally do that so in all the enterprise application we do maintain a log file when you call a method and when you're done with the method execution because it will be helpful for you to debug your application later. Let's say if you deployed your applications on a server and something went wrong, how would you know what went wrong? And that's where log comes into picture, right? So you can debug your application there. Now we don't just write log files. We also write a security code. Uh, when I say security code, I simply mean, you know, when you are calling this method, you want to make sure that the user is logged in uh, because I want, to, I want to transfer money only when I'm logged into the system. So maybe one line of code, you will check for the secure, you will do some security stuff, maybe one, one line of code or four lines of code, depend upon which security feature you're using, right? If you're using some APIs, you can do it in one line. If you're doing it by yourself, maybe five to six lines, right? So that's one thing you will write. Now we also have to do the transactions. Now, whenever you work with databases or if you work with JNDI, maybe some, you have a database on some other server, 
and if you are using some framework so normally what we do is we maintain the transaction now what we do is before executing your business logic you have to start the transaction because see of course when you are transferring money you are doing a transaction right in that case you begin the transaction so here here somewhere you will uh, begin your transaction right and then at the end once you complete your business logic you will end your transaction here so this is where your transaction uh, gets terminated or maybe you can say commit now this is where you will commit it right okay now once you say begin and commit so just see this it may be one line of code maybe five lines of code you never know right so it may be one line of code here maybe five lines of code the thing is if you are doing this code i mean if you're writing your method you have 15 lines of code which is actually a business logic and apart from that you have so many lines of code which is responsible just to have those extra thing now think about this as a developer you will be writing multiple methods right you will not write just one method every method will have a different business logic so when you say business logic it will be different for different methods but what about log log code it will be same what about security code it may be same what about transaction code it may be same right and that too as a customer what you want is your business logic right this is something which you write as a programmer you don't you don't ask your customer hey i will be i will be doing all these things right and the second thing is as a developer we want to see only business logic in the method because if something goes wrong you don't want to play with this code there right and that's why what is recommended is let's just imagine if you have 50 to 60 methods do you think is it logical to write all these things in all the methods people do that okay so when you make big application we do that we don't have a choice but do we have a solution for this don't you think we should be make, make, taking these things as a common out somewhere i mean i will write this stuff in some other code and something like this what i will do here is i don't want to do all this stuff here let me create another class i will say this class is my i, I will call this class as anything i will say helper uh helper class uh simply say helper so we got a class here i want in this class i i want all those things example log should be maintained here so i will say hey you are responsible to maintain the log you can write whatever statement you want to write here uh, example i will say i will say system dot out dot print and i will say logged uh, or maybe you can you can say show call you are maintaining a log file here again you can write multiple lines of code that's not important here you can write you can you can do whatever you want important is uh, you have to make sure that you separate your code so whatever extra code you have which is not required in the method you can separate it out and you can keep that in uh, you can keep that in a separate method right so log is done there uh, we can also do do it for security so what you can do is you can create another method which will maintain the security and then what you will do is instead of writing all the code here you can you have to call log right so you will call log from here then you will call security from here right and then you will call transaction from here so you, you will say begin transaction you will say commit transaction so you can do that all those stuff but don't you think again you are calling those methods so anyway you have to get object of helper you have to call log now what if i say you don't have to write any of this code i mean you don't have to write any of this code here just write about your business logic so inside your show method there should only be business logic you can create all those methods here okay and you don't even have to call them it will be called automatically i know you will not believe me here right <laughs> and that's why aop comes into picture now aop stands for it is aspect oriented programming which simply means that you have to create a so you have to think as a different you have to think in a different way normally in java we use object oriented programming where everything is an object for us so i'm not saying you have to replace oop with aop but then aop is a supplement for aop which simply means that it supports oop so what we are doing is we are getting a separate class and this class for us will it will be called as aspect in fact we can also use an annotation here so we can simply say aspect and this class becomes an aspect for us so what is aspect aspect will have all the methods which will act as okay so we have a special name for those things so example we have log we have transaction we have security all these things are actually called as okay there are lots of jargons here okay so be with me it is also called as cross 
cutting concerns because these are this are something you can take it common right so we have all the cross cutting concerns and you will keep that in an aspect so whatever cross cutting concerns you have you can keep that in an aspect so you can see i'm creating a class here called as helper and for me this class is an aspect and you can simply write add aspect there oh but if i do that if i say control space if i try to import the package you can see it is not working now the only thing is if you want to use spring aop you have to download the jar files now of course right with new uh, frameworks you have to download new jar files now if you remember in spring framework we used to work with normal jar files right so whatever spring framework required if you if you observe we also have aop here so it should work but then spring aop is actually depend upon some other jar files so for that you have to download those jar files here now from where you will get it technically you have to go to google and you have to download those jar files provided you know the jar file names right most most of them you don't even remember those jar file names so what i did is i have downloaded the jar files for you and in the description description area you will find uh, a link where you will find all the jar files just to show you where it is in my machine uh, if i open desktop uh, you can see uh, ignore all the other things here you can see we have uh, okay where is that uh, we have aop in this aop folder i have these three files these three jar files are something you require okay only if you have only this i mean if you have these files only it will work then so what i will do is i will go back to my netbeans and here let me just add those jar files so how do you add that so right click again depend upon which ide you're working with steps may change so i will go to properties and here i will go to library and i will say add and here i will say aop and i will select all the jar files click on open and okay so you can see we got our jar files in this if i expand the library folder here uh, you can see we got oh where's that if i scroll down you can see we got these three jar files and that's it now say control space and you can see it will import the package for you our job is done right we, we are importing a package that's great okay now i will go back here so we got we, we are done with the aspect now what else we require here now the another thing we require is how it how will it will call so will it be called automatically uh, let's try so what i will do is i will go back to my spring demo let's run this code and you can see it prints hello world that's fine hello world is called because we are we are calling this alien show right that's that is where hello world is printing but it is not printing show called that means the aspect is not working this is not not getting called automatically now we have to remember some more terms the, the some more terms which is one of them is called as advice now what is advice advice is what so you have to answer what so when you call show what should be called so what i what i want is when i call show method of alien when i call show method of alien i want to call this this log method so this is my advice here and to make it an advice you have to use the type of advices there are different type of advices example you can guess it i mean one is before you can guess the next one which is after yeah right in fact there are five five things we'll only discuss about this two we have before and after before is this log will be called before calling uh, show and if you say after it this log will be called after calling show this time i want to go for before so i will say before control space and you can see we got the package now, this is how you define a uh, advice so you will call log before calling the show method and that's what we are doing here but it is giving you an error now before says hey i will be getting called but when how would your log knows when to call, when to call when to be called because there are multiple methods right let's say if you're writing an application you might have 10 methods and you don't want to call log for all the methods so you can mention here in this in this uh, round brackets when you have to when you want to do it so you can write in english you, you can say whenever when, whenever show method is called so you can write in english whenever show method get called but that will not work right that is that, that is normal english so what you have to provide is you have to do okay there's one more jargon here and that is point cut i know i aop is very simple the only problem is with the uh, with the jargons here technical terms so yeah point cut is something where which defines when or where so at what point you want to call this so where do you want to call this so i want to call log where or when you execute so that that's how you write it so you have, you have to say execution of so the execution of the method which is public void show so whenever you call show method i want this to be called it's dot is that easy let's go back to my spring demo and run 
Oh, it's still not working. You can see we still got hello world. Now, why is it not working? Because you are working with Spring Framework and Spring Framework says if you are using annotation based configuration, you have to use one more annotation, which is add component. See, Spring is all about annotations, right? We have to remember so many annotations here. So you have to mention this class as also an annotation. Okay, aspect is also annotation. Now let's run this. And oh, it's still not working. You can see it is still not printing show. Uh, it's still not printing show uh, called. It's because by default aspect uh, AOP is not enabled in your system. Okay, so in your application, you have to make sure that you enable uh, AOP. And how do we do that? So one more annotation, I, I promise this is the last one. <laughs> I know that I'm coming with lots of annotations. So this is enable aspect J auto proxy. And this is how you do it. So just, you simply write a, a annotation, which is enable aspect J auto proxy. Now I think it will work. Let's go back to the spring demo. Let's run this code. And can you see that it worked? We got show called, right? And that's the beauty about spring AOP. And if you, if you observe, in my alien, you know, this alien is so innocent, it doesn't even know that you have a helper class who is doing the log maintenance for you, right? And in future, if you want to debug something, you just have to debug this one, right? You don't have to touch the helper class. And that's the beauty about AOP. So there's a simplest example for AOP. Again, there are lots of things in AOP which we'll discuss later. Time in, you can, you can try this example. It should work. And let me know your thoughts in the comment section if you have any issues. So that's it from this video. Thank you so much for watching.